Mountains are still being moved Strongholds are still being loosed God, we believe it Yes, we can see that Wonders are still what you do We are here for you Come and do what you do We are here Hello, my friends. I'm Tyrone Holcomb, and I'm the host who loves to bring you close. And the way that I bring you closer to Jesus Christ is through this platform, Points to Ponder. You know I like to call it your Points to Ponder. And let me hasten to say that I am excited and delighted that you once again have decided to take a pause to hear what the word of the Lord is for you this week. And I believe that I have that very word that God has given unto me to share with you. The title of this teaching is Make It to the Other Side. I want to read for you, and it's a rather lengthy scripture, uh, Matthews 14, verses 22 through 32. And I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version. But I want to break this particular account down. So if you would, allow me to read it to you. And it reads, immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So... He said, come. And Peter had come down out of the boat. He walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they had got into the boat, the wind ceased. Wow. I always love this particular account in the scriptures because what it does for me is a reminder that God wants us to make it to the other side. 
Your miracle is on the other side of your predicament. God wants us to make it to the other side of life's difficulties. However, there will always be opposition to the will of God. Yet every opposition, it is an opportunity for God to show up on our behalf. Now, if we're going to make it to the other side, we all understand that there is going to be opposition, but I want to show you from this particular text the kind of opposition that we will encounter. Number one, we will encounter the waves. Now, the waves are concerning. And the reason why the waves are concerning is because they repeat as well as they rise. Matthew 14, 24 it says, the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves. My friend, you may be right now in the middle of the sea. To be in the middle of the sea, it simply means you're so far from land, so far from security. And you might find yourself right now, wherever you are in life, feeling as though you're at the point of no return. But it's a good thing when you're at the point of no return. And the reason being is because it's just as far to go backwards as it is to move forward. And God, he wants you to move forward by faith. Faith is always forward action and trusting in him. And so whenever you find yourself out there in the midst of the sea and you feel as though you're so far from land, you're so far from security, then you're forced at this point to trust in the Lord. This word wave, in the Greek, it means to swell. And so when the scriptures tell us that the waves came, when the waves come in your life, they can be concerning. Because number one, waves, they repeat. You never have just one wave on the beach, but rather they always come in the plural. It's waves, one problem after another problem after another problem. And not only do they repeat themselves, but then they rise. The waves can rise. They can become large and massive when we look at them. And God wants you to understand that Although the waves will repeat themselves and although the waves will rise, you have a help in our Lord. This is what a man by the name of Job experienced in the Bible. The scriptures reveal to us that Job, he was a man who feared God. And even though he feared God, he still experienced troubles and waves. The Bible tells us that he lost his land. And then while he was re receiving the report about losing his land, then someone else came and told him that he lost his livestock. And just when he was getting his mind wrapped around losing his livestock, someone else came and told him that all of his children were in their older brother's house partying. And the bad weather came and blew the house down. The house collapsed up under uh, a tornado, if you would. And so Job, he knew what it was like to experience problems in waves. But God, he has a way of even controlling the waves. Although they may repeat and although they rise, they're never more powerful than God. And God, he can Control those ways, my brother, my sister. I need you to know that. You know, the book of Psalms, chapter 8, it reveals to us how God is able to control the waves in life. You know, this world is made up two-thirds of water. And had you ever stopped and thought about, let's say when you go to the beach, how the waves, how they always come aggressive and crashing down on the shore, but then they got to withdraw and go back. You would think because the earth is made up of two thirds of water, that's more water than there is land, that we would become inundated and flooded with the ocean. 
However, that's not the case. The waves, they rise and the waves, they repeat, but the waves have to go in reverse. Why? Because Psalms 8 says God's word was given and those waves can go so far and they can go no further. Well, that's how it is in your life. The waves that you will experience of problems and predicaments, they may repeat themselves and they may rise, but God will cause those waves to go in reverse, my friends. And so you don't have to be concerned about the waves. See, waves will either wipe us out or lift us up. And by the power of God, I declare, you will not experience a wipeout because of this particular predicament that is coming your way. But no, you'll be able to ride that wave like a surfer. You'll be able to ride that wave to where God will have you to be. Not only are you going to experience waves that are concerning when you're going to the other side, but then you will also experience winds that are contrary. And the reason why the winds are contrary is because they always push back or give us resistance when it comes to us following God's plan. God has given you a promise and God has a plan for your life. But don't think for a second because you obey God's plan that you won't have no problems. See, the Bible told us that Jesus, he told the disciples to get into the boat. Immediately, they did it. They got into the boat. They didn't disobey the Lord. They obeyed the Lord. And although they obeyed the Lord, they still experienced opposition. They were still confronted with problems. They were still having winds that were contrary to God's plan for their life. And so often... Many of God's people, they feel that they're out of God's will because they're going through so many contradictions, so many things that are contrary, winds that are pushing back and resisting God's plan for your life. But you don't have to feel that way. Matthews 14, 24, it tells us the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by waves for the wind, it was Contrary. And this word wind, it is the Greek word that means direction. It's the four winds the north, south, east, and west. If we go on to that text that we read, our opening text, it says in Matthew 14 25, now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. Now you have to understand that the fourth watch. Is defined by the Roman watch as a time spanning between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. In other words, the fourth watch, it's a time when it's dark. And you may be right now in the darkness of uncertainty. Your life may seem dismal and therefore it leaves you discouraged because you can't see your way out of your situation. Well, that's the fourth Watch, but I'm here to tell you that when those winds, when those winds, that's the four winds, come to blow against you, Jesus, he comes in the fourth watch. That is to say, he shines his brightest when times are their darkest. So don't give up, my friends. Don't give up because you can't see your way out. See, my father taught me that we are to never try to figure out what only God can work out. And therefore, when those winds begin to push up on you, know that you can push back. And when I say push back, push is an acronym that simply means pray until something happens. That's what push means spiritually. And so when Jesus comes in the fourth hour, that's that midnight hour. That's the time when it's dark. The reason why it's dark is because God is saying, get up. God is telling some of us to get up, to wake up, to rise up. And do what, Lord? Pray. It's time to pray to God and pray until 
something happens. So when those winds try to push and be contrary to God's will for your life, to God's plan for your life, we'll push back. <laughs> it's so easy to push back when we know that God has all the power. See, that's the real question. Do you assign all the power to your problem and therefore ignore the almighty God? If you do, then it's hard to push. However, when you assign and give God credit for his power, he, think about it, God is the creator. There's nothing in this world that is created that God has not created himself. And therefore, because he is the creator, all things are subject to him. And when you know that all things are subject to God, then there's no problem when it comes to you pushing. That is praying until something happens. So you must understand that the waves can be concerning and the winds can be contrary. However, God's word is controlling. When it's all said and done, God's word, it controls every circumstance, my brothers and my sisters. Family of God, understand that God, he is not controlling everything, but he is in control of everything. Let me read again Matthews 14, 28 through 30. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, come. And Peter had come down out of the boat. He walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord. Save me. See, Peter understood that God's word is controlling. And that's how we ought to look at every predicament, problem, situation, or circumstance that becomes us. We ought to know that God's word is always in control. And so Peter said, Lord, if it's you in the fourth hour, if it's you in the darkness. And God said he'll never leave us, nor will he forsake us, especially in the darkness. And he says, if that's you, then I'll know because you'll give me a word to get out of this boat. And many preachers have taught that Peter walked on water. And I'm not upset with that because the scriptures tells us that he got out the boat and walked on water, but you got to go just a little bit higher. And I'm talking about in the spirit. The Bible tells us first there's the natural, then there's the spiritual. So in the natural, Peter walked on water, but in the spiritual, he walked on God's word because God's word is always controlling the situation that we're facing. And so Peter, he walked on his word. How do we know that he walked on his word? Because Peter didn't see Jesus and just immediately jumped out the boat. No, he understood. I need a word from you, Lord. And the Lord gave him one word. And I'm trusting that this word that you hear tonight is the one word that you need to get you through the situations that you're facing right now. And that one word was come. I need somebody to comment right now. Come, tell them I'm coming. I need you right now to go ahead and make that comment that I'm coming. See, Jesus, he told us that the thief, he comes. He comes to do what? To steal, kill, and destroy. But don't forget now, the thief does come. He's going to come with the winds. He's going to come with the waves. But Jesus didn't put a period there. After he said the thief, that is Satan, after he said the thief comes, Jesus says, but I've come, I've come to give life and life more abundantly. And it's so important to know that when the devil comes, it's never a period 
there. No, at best, it's a comma. It just means pause. Why? Wait on the Lord. The scripture tells us in Isaiah 41, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and they will not faint. I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, that after the devil comes, just put a comma. Why? Because Jesus says, but I've come. But now we can't stop there. Jesus then turned around on another occasion and he told us, he instructed us. He says, come unto me, all of you who are weary and burdened and boggled down, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. And you shall find rest. So we are to come. And that's what Peter did in that boat. Peter decided I'm going to come. Why? Because he knew all he needed was a word from the Lord. As a nation, once Israel got into the promised land, Joshua, he situated them in an ample theater type setting. And there was six tribes of Israel on one side and another six tribes on the other side. And Joshua, as their leader, he stood in the center of the tribes and he was reading the word of God to the nation of Israel. And the Bible says, as he was reading the word of God to Israel, he began to share with them from God's law, all of the blessings they would receive. And as he read the blessings one by one, the nation of Israel shouted out, amen. And then he went to reading warnings about the curses. And as he read the warnings about the curses, and at every warning, Israel shouted out, amen. And the reason why I'm sharing that with you is because much like the nation of Israel, then God is looking for his people to do now. What's that? Amen, his word. The word amen, it means I agree. In other words, it is finished. Are you able to amen God's word? If you can amen this word right now, I'm asking you to do it. Go ahead and put it in the comment section right now. Say, I'm amen in this word. What word is that? You're going to make it to the other side. It's time for you to make it to the other side, my brothers and my sisters, family of God. We can make it to the other side if we only do what Peter did. And that's to put our eyes on Jesus. However, if, like Peter, we lose our focus, the worst case scenario is we're, we're only beginning to sink. If we go back to our text, the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 14 that Peter, when he took his eyes off of Jesus and put his eyes on the elements, it says he began to sink. Hear me, beloved. It did not say that he sank. Your worst case scenario is you'll merely begin to sink when you walk on God's word to come. Your marriage, it may begin to sink. Your business, it may begin to sink. Your finances, it may begin to sink. You may be beginning to sink even in your health right now. But all you have to do is regain your focus and do what Peter did. That is cry out to God. And God will do what he did for Peter. He will stretch forth his hand and he'll pull you out of whatever situation that you find yourself in. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 24, 16, for a just man falls down seven times, but every time he falls down, he rises up again. The Lord, he wants to lift us and he will remain with us as we go through this journey. My brothers and my sisters, make it to the other side. Don't worry about the winds. Don't worry about the waves. Focus and follow God's word. And when you do, you'll make it to the other side and you'll be better off than when you were before you started. Don't give up hope because you have help. Your help cometh from the Lord. Hey, my friends, I thank you and I pray that this word 
was an encouragement to you. I know it certainly encouraged me. And if it did encourage you, leave a comment. Let this preacher know. I need to know that I'm striking the mark as it relates to bringing the word of God to you. And so leave a comment. And then I'll use some of those comments to encourage other people to tune in to the points to ponder this following week. And then I'm asking you to help us get the word out. Share this word with your family, with your friends, with your co-workers. Help me get this word out. Let's get this algorithm on YouTube popping. Let's get it moving by you sharing this word. This word is not only for you, but it's for somebody that you know. And then I'm asking you to join us on all of our social media platforms. That's Twitter, Facebook, as well as Instagram. Well, beloved, remain safe. And whatever you do, don't go through this week without recognizing and acknowledging God is real. God bless. We love you.